I'm Jill Tardif from the University of Arizona, and I'm one of the organizers of the 2019 BCVS in Boston. Here with me today is Dr. Steve Jones from the University of Louisville, and we're going to be talking about his presentation in the session looking at early triggers of heart failure. Um, we're going to be looking, talking specifically about the role of the extracellular matrix. And something that I find really very interesting as someone who's also a clinician mm -hmm. is this concept of the extracellular matrix as a, as a living thing in right, a way, right. right? Because, you know, when we see patients with um, end stage or late stage heart failure, for example, they have scarring. So it's right. fibrotic replacement. Right. And I think these, you know, what we're really trying to actually one of the themes of the meeting mm -hmm. was that we wanted to look at the very early stages of disease where we actually right. could intervene and change the natural history or the arc right. of the development and the pathogenic remodeling that occurs in patients, you know, with the goal of really intervening early and right. start to right. finally right. talk yeah. about preventing and not just, you know, sort of holding the line, if you will. So, right. so Steve, yeah. I'd so, I mean, Jill, that's, that's a great point. What a lot of people think of when they think of uh, a fibrosed heart, so say after infarction, mm -hmm. is this sort of intractable scar. Right. And there's no doubt that that's there, and that's something that, you know, you can, you know, visualize with imaging techniques sure. and patients. And then, of course, in animal models, we can see the time course development mm -hmm. of. But what the, the sort of position that we're trying to advocate for or advance is that the extracellular matrix is not a static thing. So yeah, we look at collagen, these fibro formation that happens, and that you have these sort of rope-like or cable structures that are seemingly immovable, seemingly intra intractable. But what we want people to do now is move more toward a global understanding of what's actually happening in the heart. So, you know, we've heard for years about metabolic changes that happen. And, you know, people argue about whether the shift toward glycolysis or moving toward fatty acid oxidation. There's a lot of valuable research in there. But what, uh, what we're, the point we're trying to make is that, you know, metabolism is not all about generating ATP. And so as the heart's trying to rebuild muscle, rebuild membrane, uh, one of the things that can happen is some of these accessory pathways can be hijacked. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that um, you know, I discussed earlier today is about how uh, one specific component or building block that mm -hmm. can occur, hyaluronin, can be extruded out uh, from, say, cardiomyocytes or fibroblasts mm -hmm. and actually have an uh, immunologic impact uh, on the myocardium. So it's not just you know, activated fibroblasts, collagen, right. that's it, story over. It's, it's a much more dynamic process right. that, that we're advocating for. And you were mentioning sort of an inside-out signaling. Is that what you were referring to in a way yeah. that, that, yeah. that it's starts the whole thing? Yeah, this is, you know, I think this is where I'll argue a lot of talks for the last few days mm -hmm. have, been, have been trying to zero in on. And, um, you know, this concept of how different different structures within the heart interact with each right. other. You know, right. this is, it's, a, it's an interesting perspective from you know, those of us who are myocyte biologists who yeah. were busy thinking about how you know, the, different, the sarcomere intera interacts with the nucleus or right. those sorts of and things. Everything's and everything's within the four walls. Everything's in there, <laughs> yeah. that's right, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, really, that's, so that's, that's, that's what we're interested in because it's, you know, again, when you think about it from an organismal level, we're taking in say, nutrients from mm -hmm. the outside, and then even if at the cellular level you have this sort of uh, more primitive building blocks, not complex you know, food uh, sources, but then they're being taken into the cells and used either to rebuild sarcomeric right. structures, um, the nuclear envelope, whatever it may be, but then those can be communicated in a different form, in a different right. message back outside of the cell. And we think how you run it is just one. We don't right. think it's the only answer. You know, we think that's just one of the components sure. uh, that's active in the extracellular matrix. Yeah, it's, a, it's sort of a, a new way of thinking about a lot of things that we've had some, I think, some pretty strict ideas about for yeah. a very long time. And it's, it's, it's very freeing, I would argue. Yeah, it's you know it's exciting for us and it's exciting for the trainees in the laboratory right. and other colleagues in the area. The the only caveat I, I would uh, submit to you is that um, when you deal with something like hyaluronin, which we we previously called hyaluronic acid, acid yeah. um, you know a lot of people say, oh yeah, we looked at this in the right. 50s and Gene <laughs> Brunwald did a story like no 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 that was with acute MI that's not what we're talking about here. Right. We're not talking about you know the hydration effect of hyaluronin and the acute infarct uh, right. sparing effect. You know we're really talking about remodeling and how this metabolic signal that's then extruded out into the extracellular matrix could dictate some of the immunologic remodeling that's going on. And, and give us new targets for yeah, future hopefully. therapies. Yeah, that's exactly right. And then rebalancing. And, right. you know, again, that sort of look, helps us look back to the whole idea of um, re-engaging or recoupling metabolic mm -hmm. processes to one another. And so I'm fortunate enough to be, you know, I'm not a... 
Um, I, I'm maniacal, I guess, about the metabolism part, but not a card-carrying metabomaniac. I have his wonderful colleague, Brad Hill, who's the, you know, he's the real uh, diehard metabolism uh, person, so he keeps us straight, and we're able to do some very uh, elegant things in a collaborative effort with uh, uh, deep network tracing, which, you know, he talked about also at this meeting, so. I think, you know, and that's a, another, actually, that's another theme of this meeting, is how to build these sorts of collaborations, yeah. and, and I think it's a very important message for our more junior colleagues who are just mm -hmm. getting started, and, you know, in, I know you still probably remember this. I know I do, thinking that everything had been solved. Right. It's oh, yeah. And it's, oh, yeah. It's just really not true, <laughs> right. right? There's so, nothing left to do. Not, what am I going to do? No, there's right. nothing left. And so I think this is a very exciting aspect of it. Yeah. Is, and, and so it really, I think the, the meeting was very strong on that in particular this year. Oh, no doubt. Very, no doubt. I mean, it's, it's, it's the, the conclusion is set. I mean, right. the, certainly not everything is solved, but you have to work with other people. You right. have to collaborate with other people. And, you know, particularly on, say, the genetic side, I mean, mm -hmm. that's something where I would have to, you know, work right. with someone like you to right. be able to understand some of these problems a bit sure. better. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's exciting, though. I mean, it that's the, it's an opportunity. I mean, uh, yes, there are elements of it that are challenging, but it's an exciting time to do what we do, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exciting and fun, I would yeah, argue. And I think right. that was something we really noted over the last few days at the meeting. We yeah. were, I think we all had a really great time, and we're really looking forward to everyone joining us next year in Chicago for BCBS 2020.